Yesterday evening after the rice lesson, the children returned to Wat Ba Sangam and gathered at the food hall for Nampana refreshment as usual. Many children meditated while waiting for the Nampana that would come shortly. When Pra Ajahn arrived, some children offered Nampana to him and returned to their seats to wait for drinks. The junior monks assisted the senior monks. This was an example for the children to observe and learn so they may carry it out. The method the forest dwellers use to teach is to be a role model. When it was the children's turn to receive Nampana, Pra Ajahn kindly poured the drink for them. The duty of cleaning up the utensils and the place is a way to practice behaviors and mindfulness to be disciplined and prudent. A characteristic of the forest dwellers is to have appropriate manners and be admirable. Before taking a shower, Ajahn told the children to separate into groups and practice the ukasa once again. Some children practiced putting on the saffron robes and Ajahn assisted them closely as always. You bow many, many times when you hold the G wall in your hand. You can sometimes you can here before you go to the brow, the Upachaya brow, Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, and Lungta. Many, many times when you can start all them. 
can try for skill from here. Yeah. Do you have to do this at plant? Yeah, sometimes I put it here. When it's here. I can put it here in my arm too. At sunset, it was time for the evening chant. But before that, the children meditated as usual. As the evening's chanting continued, the children were able to keep their mindfulness and concentrate on further developing their kindness and monastic duties. Now let us send the Buddha's words on loving kindness. This is what should be done by one who is skilled in goodness and who knows the path of peace. Let them be able and upright, straightforward and gentle in speech, humble and not conceited, contented and easily satisfied. After the evening chant, the children reviewed the ordination chant with Pra Ajahn. Some practiced in pairs and tried to find the best way to memorize the ukasa more precisely. Okay, and then, alright, then you go. Is it the thingy? Oh, 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 you know this part? Foot? You know this part? Not really. I didn't. So, aham bante. Aham bante. Sarana si long. Sarana. Sarana. Si long. So, we're asking for sarana, which means um pung refuge. Right. And si long is si long. Si long. So, so we're we're asking for a refuge to stay, and we're asking for si long. Some asked Pra Ajahn to practice with them one by one to correct their pronunciation. Okay, so you can practice that. All right, next page. Can we do this again? Hmm? Can we do this again? Again? Good. Okay, stand up. กาสะวันธามิพันเตสะพังอภารตังขามะตามิพันเตปาเจตาวังตามะมังมังมังพันเตปะนะมังมันเตปะมังมันเตอนุกัมปังอภารายะสวหาดเกตสตาปะ I will, I will memorize. Why is it not like Ukasa Pankhami Pante Sapan The children found it hard to memorize the ordination chant in Bali, but they showed continuous determination and effort. Then Pra Ajahn let the children practice other steps of the ordination ceremony. Before the children practiced putting on the saffron robes, some of them translated parts of the ukasa to their friends. Ukesa is hair. Loma is her body hair. Yes. And nakha. Nakha is fingernails. Hatta is teeth and that so is her skin. Why do you have to remember it? You, in case you need it, that's like the, the five. That's the five of them for the meditation. Pra Ajahn continued to assist the children in putting on the saffron robes until nighttime. 
most of them did better than before, and some can do it on their own. I, will, I can do it all by myself. I did it. I did it. Almost. Lastly, Pra Ajahn emphasized that the children must continue to practice the ordination chant and how to wear the saffron robes. Time to practice more about the chanting, uh, the ten precepts, and the uh, ukasa. Uh, the, the one who uh, haven't got it yet have to practice. So we have only a few days left. Uh. No, three days. Three days, okay. So not, it's not much. Uh, so we have to practice before you go to bed and if you wake up in the morning you can also practice. Uh, you can pair up with your friends. Uh, after come back for Pintapada, then you can do the practice. Though the children have shown some progress, Pra Ajahn repeated the importance of practicing and asked the children to keep doing it until it becomes second nature. That way the children will be able to recite the ordination chant and put on their saffron robes smoothly during the ordination ceremony. In the morning of the fifth day, the ordination preparation for the 12 children started at dawn as usual. They practiced mindfulness and prepared themselves to learn new things. Pra Ajahn and the children gathered at the study hall for morning chanting, which is part of the monk's routine. Supati Panno Bhagavato Savaka Sangho Sangha Namami The morning chant is one of the practices that helps to suppress hindrances such as sleepiness and laziness that obstruct enlightenment or the strong will to practice Dharma. This morning, some children got a chance to go for alms with Pra Ajahn barefoot for the first time. Although many children were not used to walking barefoot, they were patient and assisted Pra Ajahn along the way. Jack Brown, volunteering to be a temple boy, 
help transfer the food from the monks' alms bowls and the children's bags to the carts, and then return to Wat Ba Sang Am. children washed and wiped the monks' feet nicely. In Thai culture, this activity demonstrates high gratitude and respect. While the children were helping the supporters sort the food, Jack asked them about walking barefoot and going for alms with the monks this morning. Bin Bin, how are your feet? Uh, hurting, sore. Because you told me when we went to Bintapat that you found it painful to walk. Yeah. I think that the more you do it, the, more you the easier it. it will become because your feet become tougher. What does it mean to you to go bare feet? to avoid sharp rocks. You've got to focus more to avoid... Sharp rocks. Sharp rocks. And it makes you think more about walking than other things. Yeah, it's like meditation, right? Yeah. Did you also think about the, the nature that could be on the floor, the ants? Yeah. And things that you don't want to stand on and kill? Yes, but there weren't many on the road. There was a lot of chickens, and I like chickens. But it is a big change, isn't it? When you take your shoes off, you think a lot more about where you're walking and you're a lot more careful. Before the meal, the children helped collect the alms bowl's covers and neatly folded the bags and cloth slings. They washed the alms bowls again, as they did before going for alms. Then Pra Ajahn let the children review the ordination chant, or Ukasa, that they have to recite during the ordination ceremony on the 1st of July. Many children had trouble memorizing it. No, but when we do it, I only know that in one more day, part. when we do it, we have to be on stage. Yeah, so we have to be on stage. People will watch you. If you not do it correctly, then it's, uh, you can't become a novice. You novice have to know the chanting. Have to know the... Well, I can't be one. I don't know the... You can, yeah, just, just memorize it. Pra Ajahn explained that during the ordination ceremony, the children will have to sit with their legs folded back to one side and put their hands together in prayer position for quite a long time. So he suggested that they start practicing and gave them encouragement. Ati, can you do it? No, it's sitting. Ati. But can you put your leg like this or not? It can stuck. That's fine, yeah. And then hold on. Like this. Don't lean. Put your hands here. Okay. Do this for five minutes. I hold here. Okay, two minutes. I can do that. Okay. Can you do that? As the ordination day is approaching, the children were eager for Ukasa rehearsal with the preceptors. What? Iman. Iman Kasaba. Iman Kasaba. 
This morning, Pra Ajahn taught the children the offering script and selected daily representatives to lead the chanting. Long-term welfare and happiness. Okay, so I'm the leader. So today, who, who, today, today, maybe Jiao, and then tomorrow Bino. Okay. Beno, so, Beno, Beno. The children prepared the meal and offered it to Pra Ajahn. Pra Ajahn stated that normally laymen will recite this offering chant, but that the children should learn it. This will come in handy for after they have left the monkhood. Uh, do the training of offering the food to the monks is called offering Sangadana. So now you are Ubod Upasaka, you have to learn how to offering the food to the monks. The boy's representative led the offering chant with the monk's assistance. Imani mayang pante. Imani mayang pante. Bharani sapawarani. Sapariwarani sapawarani. Oh, again. Patani. Patani sapariwarani. 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 Pra Ajahn allowed the boys who could be mindful and calm to get their meals first. The monks reiterated the value of rice so that there should be no leftovers. So rice is very important. Right? You see how the rice come yesterday, right? So don't waste any food. How it's difficult for people to have rice to put in your bowl. So you have to take every bite full with a grateful attitude, okay? So the one way of doing this is to reflection on what, why do we eat food? What the purpose of eating? All of the lessons from the temple courtyard, the study hall, the rice field and the food hall come together as one bit by bit. After the meal, the boys washed and wiped their utensils, then assisted Pra Ajahn. Many of them volunteered to wash and wipe the alms bowls. While washing the alms bowls, Pra Ajahn kindly taught the children about manners and how to treat monks properly. When you stand closely, post monk, you sit down. Some of the children helped to place the alms bowls in the carriers with Pra Ajahn's assistance. Putting the alms bowls in the carriers requires some effort for those who are not familiar with it. <coughs> then
Then the boys lost their mindfulness, so Prajan reminded them to stay still. If you too much talk and paying, I'm not sling bell. Everything here, me, Ajahn Sumai. I like quiet really much. You can learn the quiet, how it's quiet, how it's peaceful. You can know, you can practice. If you're playing all the day, you not see quiet, you not see peaceful. But if you come and you keep talking to each other, you never learn what it means to be in monastery. You come to the monastery, but you haven't arrived here yet. You're still talking. So now every time when you come and you're waiting for Ajahn, rather than try to play and speak, you try to be, say, like meditation. Or do some chanting. We have a lot of chanting to do to memorize. Okay? And also how to put on the rope as well. Okay? We have, we have to be able to put on the rope, especially on the ceremony day. During the picture storytelling session, Pra Ajahn shared Buddhist stories with the children. When Ajahn saw the picture, the image really peaceful. When we saw the Buddha image, just the image on it, the face on it, then our heart uh, is peace and no suffering. So when we come to practice, in Buddhism, what is our goal? Meditate. Meditate for what? To get peace. Right. Peace. Putang Sadanang Kachami. We like to be Him, be like Him. So today, we have to talk about the life of the manga is practice, follow the Buddha. Prajan asked questions and discussed the Lord Buddha with the boys. First, we have to know the Buddha born where? Where is it? The Buddha born? I know Nibini. Which place? The Buddha born under the tree in the forest. The Buddha enlightened under the tree in the forest. Right? Okay. The third, uh, the Buddha, the first teaching. Give the first teaching. Where is it? Yes, under the tree. The Buddha Nibbana passed away. In the forest, under the tree, right? The whole life of the Buddha and then the whole life of the Sangha, our monk who follow the Buddha, also in the forest. We practice in the forest, our life in the forest. Praajan explained how the forest dwellers train, which is normally in the forest. You know why the monks come to practice first? They come to the forest to practice. Why? They want to be, they want to use the environment, the nature, to practice their heart also peace like the nature. After their heart uh, get strong and get free, freedom, they get strong, they have samadhi. Then when they go back to the city, no problem because their heart is peaceful. So the peaceful uh, is not outside. The peaceful actually is the inside, in our heart. If you get well tra training, then no problem. Every place, Ajahn Chah said, every place is the peaceful place. If your heart is peace. Pra Ajahn asked the children questions about the pictures that were quite intriguing. Why the monk sit here? Why? I, I so so dangerous place. Why he sit here? It's dangerous. Yeah? Because no one will come by like him. Oh, no. When we wake up early, the monk is practice hard. Their food, uh, they eat the food only one meal a day. So a little food only. They also feel tired. So they come to sit here. So we're scared. He will give the energy.
After the illustrated storytelling session, Pra Ajan let all the children move to the study hall and learn how to sew the robes, which are the clothing of the monks. So it's a this time we learn to about how our sabong, the sabong designer, they have the sabong and angsa and jiwon. And we learn, we practice here the cloth by hand, by machine. Pra Ajahn created two groups, assigning a sewing by hand lesson to the first group and machine sewing lessons to the other. Mending the saffron robes is the way of the forest dwellers. It is also a custom for monks to prepare the eight requisites for those who wish to ordain. Pra Ajahn started to teach the kids how to make monkey fizz shaped buttons made of a single rope. Although the way Pra Ajahn did it seemed easy and simple, the children found it difficult and complicated to make. Pra Ajahn demonstrated how to sew the shoulder robe with the machine. The way Pra Ajahn sewed the shoulder robe by hand was astonishing for the kids as well. How do you do that? You know, just go with your nail, like, like scratching, like you have a mosquito bite and you just like scratch, 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 scratch. How do you? So then it really, really sticks together. How do you do that? Just go bit by bit. Oh, I did it. After they'd learned how to sew, Pra Ajahn let the boys do it by themselves. How do you make it a ball? And so you put this middle. in here, yeah. and then you put this in here. You can? I want a plastic. Like, can yeah, you fly like a plastic? Then Pra Ajahn taught the kids how to put on the saffron robes. Ah, uh -uh, see? See, see, here, here. It's, not, it's not even now, this one, not good. You have to be the same line, yeah? Slowly, you have to be patient, be mindful, okay? Ah, let's try. Ah, slowly, slowly. The new lesson from this morning helped the children learn and realize monks' habits and prepare themselves for ordination, which will come in the next two days. To be prepared for ordination, all the children have to learn the monk's skills and practice and develop other skills simultaneously. They will become a new generation that is well-behaved, thoughtful, and generous. This afternoon, during the learning process class, the boys went to the banyan tree area next to the study hall. When Jack asked the children what the picture on the board was, the answers were varied. I see faces in there. What does this mean to you? A horse, a cat, and a snake. So to you, it's a series of animals? Yeah. Dr. Tirachai Ponsin Sirirak, a Thai nanoscientist, led the learning session this afternoon with the activity Don't Believe What You See, Don't See What You Believe.
Dr. Tirachai let the boys look at the pictures and then discuss them. They all saw different things. Forming a circle. Forming a circle. Okay. Okay. Anybody else who and see difference? The circle will not stop. Okay. It goes on and on. So I can see that um, there's the top is like straight. Yes. And when it goes in through, it looks like a circle at the end. But I'm um, like, how does okay. it happen? What about this one? But if you look closely, yes, it looks like an H, but like standing up. But if you look on the on the third line, right there, okay, it looks like a, an H lying down, uh -huh. and, and it repeats that pattern all the way. Yes. Apart from looking, Dr. Tirachai told the kids to use rulers to ensure what the pictures truly were. How about Trevor, you are you are using the ruler right now. When you look at it, it's like, it tricks your eyes. Like, when you look at it, it's like curvy, and then when you put the rule on, it's straight. That's right. The children tried to look at the pictures from different angles. Look, it's from the corner like this. Are they parallel to each other? Oh. Yes, very good. So that's one way you test it, right? So what you see it now is not the same as well. Okay? Yes. For this picture, the kids were trying to figure out how many squares were actually there. Oh, you know, okay. That's good. He looks from a different One, angle. Two, three. One, two, three, four. What? What? Dr. Tirachai explained to the children that each person might see different pictures due to his own perspective. There's no right or wrong because that's how the illusion works. I mean, what? this just illustrates, you know, like they draw, if you, if you count it from the left, it's four on the picture. If you count it from the right, it's actually three, okay? So, so this part is like more of a, you know, don't believe in, in what you see because your eyes sometimes can pay the eyes away the eyes, right? Perceive and the brain process what you see, okay? It's different. The children looked at other pictures, then shared what they saw with their friends. It's a frog. This is the eye. Okay. This is the mouth. This, this is, is the eye. This is the mouth. This is the nose of it. The nose, okay. And this is the body, the, the two body. front legs, the back leg, and that part there. Two front leg and back leg. And what, what is this one? I don't know. It's like... In the water, if it, maybe? Yeah. It's probably a shadow, but if you move this way, it's okay. So if you move this way, he said it's a horse. Does it everybody agree with him? Yeah. It looks like a horse. Think again. But but what? Which are parts of the horse? What? Where? The, where's the eye of the horse? And what? Where are the ears? The, this is the back legs of the frog. Okay. This is the. This is the some sort of pattern on the frog. Of this the is, frog, right? Uh huh. This is the eye of the frog, and here's the mouth the back legs and the, okay, and very the front good. legs. But Trevor tra already explained the frog. Can you explain mm -hmm. the horse a little bit? Like what do you see in the horse? The, this is the hair. This is the hair, the mane of the horse. Uh -huh. uh, you agree? Uh -huh. Okay, very good. Dr. Tirachai concluded that our brains cannot work as fast as our eyes. Therefore, if we just change our view, then we will see the difference. The boys came into the study hall and watched a 3D illusion that Dr. Tirachai had prepared. What you saw on here and what's in the mirror, what do you see? Tell me, please.
As they considered the objects in many aspects, they brainstormed how the pictures appeared as they were. Come stand up here. Okay, Pat, stand up, right? DJ, Everyone can you stand up and see? About over here. Look, you, you look at the view from you sitting down and when you stand up, you see differently. Tell me. Then it was a circle, then, it was, then in the middle it was a square, then it was a circle in the middle, then it kept changing. And it kept changing, right? Lastly, the boys shared their personal experiences of things that were not what they thought, as Dr. Tirichai asked them to do. So it was, a, it was a dark time. When I was about to go home, I saw this bike ride coming from another soy. Okay. And then I thought it was a car, so I braked. Suddenly, when I, when, I blinked, when I blinked again, there was nothing there. So on the first day of school, Okay. Um, I went to school and then I had to look at the barn and went, this is easy to climb and then I jumped onto it and I didn't realize it was curvy because oh, okay. when I looked at it from a it's direction flat. it was like yes. this and then I tried to grab it and then I missed the barn and then I fall over. Oh no, okay. <laughs> because Did I didn't you, you understand what Trevor was explaining? Dr. Tirichai repeated the main purpose of the class once again. Remember, don't, uh, don't believe what you see. Don't, don't see what you believe. You. Discover yourself, okay? All right, very good. The children got a chance to question, share, and analyze. These things promoted logical thinking and tremendous imagination. Also, they were able to get along peacefully with other people. From these experiences, these 12 children will be mindful, intellectual, and truth-oriented. Follow the preparation practice before the ordination ceremony and the summary of daily routines tomorrow at 9 p.m. on True Vision channels 60 and 99, True Vision HD channels 119 and 333, or watch the program on True Blue Panya channel, or follow the worldwide streaming on www.truelittlemonk.com and Facebook True Little Monk. The live broadcast is available 24 hours on True ID and True Blue Panya application. <laughs>